Good morning, everyone. Hashtag 2020 welcomes you all for this wonderful session. Today, we have architect Karan Desai with us as a part of Footprints of Architects presenting on design and build. I am architect Fatima, assistant professor at SRMC Drama <laughs> As a moderator of this session, I'm happy to welcome all the participants and the speaker of the day, architect Karan Desai. Welcome you, sir. Uh, before commencing the session, I would like to request all the participants to keep the audio and video turned off for a hassle-free experience and also kindly use the chat box to post your questions, which would be taken up by the speaker in the Q&A session after the presentation. And also kindly refrain from using any offensive words in the chat box. And I now welcome our convener, Vice Principal, SRMC Architect Lokesh Madhivaran to give his welcome note. Yes, uh, good morning, one and all present here. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, welcome, architect Taran Desai. Uh, it was a great pleasure to us. Uh, you, uh, you, I am very much thankful to you for accepting this uh, invite to present to our students. Your knowledge is so, so, so well. You just kindly share your knowledge to our students and all the participants in this event. And we, as a seed department, always welcome you, welcome you whole, whole heart at least, sir. Welcome, uh, sir. And uh, good morning, one and all present here. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I also thank our management for giving this wonderful opportunity. Our chairman, sir, co-chairman, sir, director, sir, Dean ENT and Dean KTR for the fullest support for this event. And also, I am congratulating all the moderators and. Uh, all the co coordinators uh, uh, for this successful event and uh, without any delay, I am handing over the mic to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request the faculty coordinator, architect Pooja Kataka, to welcome our guest speaker of this session. Over to you, Pooja. A very good morning to one and all. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome architect Tadran Desai, who graduated with Bachelor of Architecture from University of Mumbai. Karan has also worked with celebrity architect Ashish Shah. Architect Karan is a passionate founder of his economy studio, Karan Desai Architecture and Design. Inspired by contemporary aesthetics and clean lines, the studio beautifies projects from residential to commercial on varying scales. From ideation rooms to offices, homes to private categories, the team designs projects and products in close association with clients to deliver unique results and reflect personal taste with consolidating the studio's vision. Karan Desai Architecture and Designs projects have been featured in the most acclaimed design, design magazines like Home Review, Better Interiors, Architecture and Design, El Decor, to name a few. I now request the very talented architect Karan to take over for the presentation. Over to you, sir. Hi. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, very kind words spoken about me. Thank you, the college team, to uh, get me on board to talk to your students. It's overwhelming and it's going to be hysterical for me. So please uh, uh, excuse me for that. Um, so are you guys, can you guys listen to me? Can you guys see me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very well. All right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, uh, um, yes, Pooja did speak about me. I'm just going to quickly uh, talk about myself. Is that um, uh, I wanted to be an architect since I was at the age of, uh, I was in my fifth grade, actually. Okay. And this was because of my, I think I should remember this, uh, because my, um, my grandmother had a beautiful old mansion in uh, Bombay. And uh, they sold the property, unfortunately. And um, I would be sitting there every day when the building was uh, being broken down. And I had in my mind that, you know, one day I am going to be an architect and I'm going to build a similar kind of a house uh, for my grandmother. Uh, I lost a couple of years ago. Uh, that's sad and haven't been able to do that. But uh, I am an architect today. So this has been my passion since I was you know, in my fifth grade. Um, the second thing is that uh, I joined architecture uh, and um, in my second year, I got a year job. All right. So this is for all of you 
who are really passionate about their project, about their life, about their careers. But uh, perhaps I took it a little too lightly and I got a year drop in my second year. That's when I started to intern under architect Ashish Shah. Uh, today, I would say that whatever I'm doing is because of his uh, training to me. I joined him when I didn't even know what a skirting was, right? And today, uh, I'm at a level that we're doing architecture, interiors, furniture, and products. So I give that, I owe that to him. And of course, after I resumed my school after 18 months for the next three years of my curriculum. And by the time I was finishing, I was thinking that, oh, you know, perhaps I want to go abroad and pursue some higher studies or work under some architect. Um, I already had like a couple of projects, you know, like Chachi, Imami and all of them. So I did that. I was like, okay, fair enough. I'm going to do that and I'll bounce off. And, but uh, the beauty was that it just kept on multiplying. And in 2012, we formed our studio and uh, we've been working ever since, right? So very quickly, because Pooja here has given me a strict timeline, which I need to follow. So I'm going to show you guys a project that was recently featured in Architectural Digest. It's an interior project, uh, something very close to my heart. Uh, I'm going to quickly show you that and the main concept, which is design and build. I'm going to talk to you about that. So I'm going to share my screen with you. <clears throat> so uh, it was a 3BHK that we did and um, uh, uh, a challenging job because usually when you have an apartment, most of the walls are going to be uh, partition walls. But in this house, 80% of the walls were sheer walls, right? So we didn't really have um, a leverage or the luxury to change the walls and make the room sizes or alter the room sizes or the bathroom sizes. So anyway, this is where you enter the house. I've always believed, and this is what I take after... Um, architect Zaha Hadid, that no matter how expensive uh, product you use, like a marble or a furniture or a wall treatment, the user should have an experience. Anybody who enters the property, the space, should go through a journey. And that's how somewhere architecture has really helped me in doing some really cool interior planning as well. Because when you get the layout, you you think from an architect's point of view, his mindset, that how do I plan this whole space that when you come in and step out, you go through a journey, right? <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, what we did here was that here is the double door, double, ent double door entry to the living room, where we just um, quadranted off by making a small reception for your kind of space so that the moment somebody enters in, you don't uh, have a visual of the house in totality, right? So this is the first thing that you see is this. That's your reception. Sorry. This is the living room space. Now, uh, there is usually a concept which we have in our minds that a darker space, a darker color to the living room or a bedroom makes the space smaller and it will look dingy and claustrophobic. But here we took a leap in a uh, chat challenging that concept which all of us live with today and perhaps even me at some point of time but we were like that hey you know what because this entire space was too long uh, we decided to break it up not with partitions uh, but with the colors so this is the part of the living room the formal living that you see the entire thing the wall the ceiling everything is um is it's a dark color with a really dark wooden floor <clears throat> makes it look extremely cozy and warm. Uh, this is just another view. Uh, we've got extreme uh, 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 compliments, I would say, for the fan that is used in this place. It's designed by uh, Karim Rashid. <clears throat> That's a space. 
um that's the living room bit this is during the night time i'm just going to swift i'm just swifting through this entire presentation because this is not the main thing that i want to talk about this is the mandir area that we did now on the left hand side that you see is that where the blue and the nude color meet right right on the wall and the floor and it's been divided by a copper patti inlay right this is the den area uh, uh, the dining space uh, we've had an island kitchen <clears throat> kitchen bit this is the uh, bedroom which the mother uses and is also the guest bedroom this is the bathroom for the mother this is the kids bedroom okay they wanted to have a bunker the son wanted to sleep on the top and so the pink resonates for the girl and the green resonates for the boy uh if you see these tiles something really interesting about this is that these are the tiles from marca corona it's a brand that chalk series and the beauty of this is that you know like as kids you want to scribble around everywhere you want to write everywhere you want to just mess it up right so these tiles you can be scribbling around whatever you want wherever they want on the floor on the wall and all you need to do is just mop it to clean it so this was a entire area for like a canvas for the kids to scribble as much as they want this is their bathroom we played with colors just like you know to teach them colors this is the master bedroom a little anti space for them and this is the actual bed space again the another concept that we usually have in our minds that uh you know a four poster bed only looks in a place where you have like massive heights or a bigger space or a wider space but here not only we have a darker color on the wall and the ceiling uh it's a short height ceiling just around 7 and a half feet and we have a four poster bed so that's that i mean like we've loved to challenge and explore every every uh mindset that we live with and it's turned out to be beautiful <clears throat> that's another space during the night time here also what i'd like to say is that usually for the interior designing students or the architects who would be practicing interior designing so on or whatever uh you have a basic concept of lighting like if you have a square room you will give 1 2 3 4 or like 1 2 3 4 5 6 lights you have broken that you only have if i may show this to you if you see these cone lights in the corner that is the light to light up this entire space you know so we broken down on that norm as well of a regular lighting layout uh this is the master bathroom uh one of my favorites and the most uh, <laughs> um money sucking area in this entire house <laughs> um so we have the dry area the shower area and the jacuzzi this is just the view from the jacuzzi side so we back to the foyer now i am going to quickly take you to my another presentation which i've been working for you guys and that is uh pooja if i'm running out of time you just need to tell me all right so uh so let's talk about uh, design and build okay uh this is a product that i'm going to be talking about in 2017 we launched karan desai home which dealt with concrete uh, home and office accessories okay so uh when people saw that we were also customizing with concrete we had a client who came up with a very specific uh, requirement she wanted this to be a gift for uh, her to be husband and um, she told me that it she believed in love she believed in infinity and a uh, couple of other things which she wanted to encapsulate in one product and uh, give it to her um, her fiance so uh, this was the first sketch that i immediately did after hearing her on the phone and i sent it to her and she jumped to the idea that karan this is what we want let's work on this right so her key points that was uh, 
infinity sign a sound wave representing i love you uh shukran uh, in arabic uh, then we have the date that she wanted to engrave when they first met and she said that you know it has to be a cool product it can be like a nice table lamp and all of that so we were like okay let's start so we started with a 3d model first that okay if i have to play with um, an infinity sign uh what are we uh, what are we looking at how it's going to look so we tried to work with um a sketchup model here and how perhaps we were looking at it and how i would be actually making this uh, infinity sign in concrete oh the most beautiful point and the important point was that this entire infinity had to be in concrete right <laughs> so uh, it was a challenge to make something like this because it was not just 3d uh, 2d it was a 3d in different levels so uh we were thinking how we going to make it so this was a 3d sketchup model that we made and the second thing that we did was we made a um, a uh, a thermocol model to understand the scale of this entire product and is it is that what we were looking for so this a uh, 3d is always representative you know um so a, a scaled model was required when we made this thermocol model we were like that you know what okay we need to kind of scale it down and do some changes and whatever finally after we did this okay the next question was that how the hell am i going to make a infinity sign with concrete okay so a genius idea popped up that you have flexi pipes right so we would make an infinity sign of the flexi pipe and uh, pump the concrete in and see how it's going to work out so this is what the product was i mean like this is after like some three or four trial and errors that we tried with different materials um uh and then finally we thought that okay this is how even in using a flexi pipe how it's going to work out right so you see that we've used the black flexi pipe which is technically used for your uh, plumbing drainage and um uh the concrete inside had all the scales so the next step after making it in the flexi pipe and removing the plastic this is how it was and to my surprise this was exactly what we had envisioned for the product so at by each passing day we were getting just closer to what we had envisioned but yes with a lot of trial and errors and that's the fun part of it right like when you're customizing a product this is how we work so we we finally got this and then the next thing was that okay how do we make it smooth or how do we get it to the final a uh, finished product that we want uh throughout the journey we would always um keep updating our clients that okay this is what we did today this is what we're going to do now and after this was this that's me <clears throat> so um that's me grinding the all the scales on the concrete then the next bit is bingo we got a really cool infinity of course with those scales but um, when we showed this to the client and we asked them if we could do something more to it uh, she said that she loved how raw it is because it is concrete right? it is meant to look raw it is meant to look uh, brutal you know what i mean so once this was done uh, because it is concrete there were other things also like challenges that uh, you know when you see a very finished product then it is no more um uh, an actual product because the moment if i would have uh, put a layer of a of a concrete water on top of it or something that if i had tried to work it out to make it look smooth and even 
it wouldn't have given that effect of um, this infinity being made out of casted out of concrete and also because it is concrete uh, it's already dried up if i put an another layer on top of it eventually it will be a puppy and it will come out right so uh, speaking with the client we decided that okay we will let it be as is and the next step with concrete comes curing so we let this entire infinity cure for around a week should have been more but uh, you know this is fine it's just a product so if you see in this it is cement um your uh, sand and water that's it this is it nothing more to it uh it needs curing otherwise it develops cracks and in general concrete as a material has a characteristics to crack right so no no worries about it you it may develop a hairline crack today or tomorrow but that's fine that's just the characteristics but curing is very important for a product so we cured it for like a week and then this is how the product is uh we were just so satisfied and happy with just this you we were like damn we achieved it but uh, the process doesn't end here so the next thing is that we needed to think about the base and the stands and all of that so we go to the next bit uh a few sketches that how i was envisioning it because somewhere uh it needed a layer where we could do the engraving and it also had to be a little elevated from the 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 platform was because one it was going to be concrete it was going to be heavy second it was it it was going to have a copper plate so it was going to be really heavy right so there had to be some way that you could lift it if you ever had to like put it into some different place or something and the other thing was that because we were also trying to make it a table lamp um my driver my wires and everything also had to be in it so if you see where i've written korean on this page is where is my housing for my wire and the driver and the top layer was going to be con- uh, copper so after this we decided that okay this is going to be the dimension of the plate uh the vertical line that you see is going to be like a thin led uh, line and uh, the sound wave that you see the the that's that uh, represents i love you and the other part represents shukran in arabic right so this was a little mock that we made of uh, with uh, sunboard and the ply to see how it's actually going to work and it worked pretty well okay so see this so if you see that's my sun board that's my mock up if you uh, in between of that is the slimmest led profile light without uh, it's a trimless profile light that you, i could find and we put it there and uh, this is just a mock up huh so <laughs> it was going to be like this and then when you light it this was the output so we figured that okay we are in the right direction we got somebody to really execute that led light for us uh, which i was really fortunate uh, about and the rest was just to get things in place slowly right so the base now if you see on the right top you see the uh, the driver now that driver had to be fitted somewhere inside so that my led could work okay so so you see the ply base down that was the housing area so then we started to uh work things out to get things together that uh uh that's the concrete infinity this is how it needs to float on this uh copper plate which has an led now to be honest we were also working uh for the base plate to rotate okay we tried a lot of permutation combinations we did a lot of research where uh, we could put like um, a motor that can keep rotating so it had some challenges uh, i mean like it's it's no rocket science because gisela house the entire house is rotating okay it rotates with the 24 hour clock 
Um, so if a whole house can rotate, this was nothing. But um, we had some challenges to find the right uh, mechanism for this. Also, if I really did, it was too bulky. It was. Uh, it used to make a lot of noise. Um, so eventually, we let that point go. So now that you see is is our mock-up on the base and the infinity and to think that how we are going to be taking it to the next level, right? So now, now we just see that we had a concept, just the sketch of infinity floating on a base and we're slowly getting to what was envisioned. So this is from the top. And what I really want you to see is that the infinity is not connected. There is a gap in the infinity and that's how infinity works, right? So these are small details that we've we've kind of worked into and looked and we, we sort of achieved it. And it, it just looked beautiful because of so much of effort that was put in. You know, it was just all just showing up. Uh, <clears throat> now we got a copper plate. It was a 12 mm thick copper plate to start with. Copper also has um, benefits, you know, it it absorbs your negativity. So that was also the reason why we put it there as a material on the tabletop, uh, because it is love at the end of the day that two people, two different mindsets, they're going to be, no two people are same in the world, right? So there are going to be times when you're going to be arguing, there are going to be clashes, but having said all of that, the love should be there. The love should be intact. And this copper material was, um, uh, uh, you know, it was like a, a what do I say? I'm sorry, I'm not getting that word, but this copper material was there to say that, okay, I'm going to attract all the negativities from your relationship and the love is going to be for infinity. <laughs> okay, please excuse me for my language. So, so we got it um, a water jet cut and we, we placed the LED to see that if, if everything is correct, okay, it worked well. Now the next step, because it's copper and it has sharp edges. So this is where we, this is what we land up doing. We, we trimmed all the sharp edges. So it's easier. Once you use that, see the edge. Now, of course, this is a raw copper. Okay, we still had to finish it. And then this video is for this video that you saw was for the two columns which were going to stand and going to support the entire infinity. Okay, so that's just a little bit. Well, let's look at that. I, I find all of this really interesting. Okay, like even today, if I look at it, I, I would enjoy it like a kid. I love all of this. And this is how it is, right? So, um, well, we achieved one more target, uh, getting the copper plate in place, getting it cut, having the slit right exact so that my LED profile can sit in. And these two holes where the, um, the copper columns can stand. So if you see this, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't find the detail of how we did the copper columns, but if you see it's a copper rod and it is turned into, uh, if you see the top bit is exactly the same at the bottom, which goes into the column and fits in and the top bit will go into your, uh, the concrete, right? So if you remember the first slide that I showed you, which had like a three mm hole, well, it it wasn't a three mm hole. It was a bigger hole, like an eight mm hole, where this entire copper stand would go and support it. Yeah, I think this is like a better detail. So <clears throat> now you see the concrete, how it rests on the column, uh, on the two copper uh, columns. 
this is how it looked and to be really honest i was already freaking out thinking that it is it is the best thing that i've ever made in my life <laughs> so um, we did this and bingo okay but so now if you see um it was a challenge to get the holes right okay in the concrete and also uh, we had to be very careful because it's it's a drill that goes into the concrete to make that hole and if it had gone with a little more pressure or a little tera uh, the entire mehnat would have gone to drain and would have had to make a new one although before practicing before getting onto the actual model of concrete which was going to be on this we had two three other models of concrete also that being made and we tried we did our recce onto that and it worked well one broke of course so we understood what we want to go ahead with and then on the second we tried again we were we succeeded there and then we tried on the actual model so if you see this uh this copper plate is raw uh without any surface um finish to it and um <clears throat> uh this is the polished one uh you see a lot of these marks but it was eventually made neat it is a mirror polish on copper <clears throat> and this is where the engraving starts and, and uh this is how it is uh this means i love you okay and is for the partner to say i love you too okay so that's how it goes uh this was uh, uh on the other side it was shukran that was engraved and uh, this was the date when they first met 15 uh 95 and we were finally assembling the entire unit with your concrete your copper columns and the copper base and tada it's ready so we were really excited about this and uh, we were running really short on the deadline because it was his birthday and she wanted to gift it at 12 o'clock and we were running late and we were trying to get everything sorted and without really messing up the copper because it leaves your fingerprints and all of that jazz so uh well to be really honest it wasn't just me it was my entire team of people who were working on top of this and they all were going crazy and what happens when we see that is it going to work and we try to do the connections st stuck the led everything is ready just a final check before we pack it into the box and send it uh, uh the wire broke <laughs> so but finally we we got in touch with the, an electrician he came down and well uh, this is how it looked and a joy new no bounds so um, we we kind of figured this that it is working and this is how it looked right totally excited but we were running out of time so now comes the packing bit we were like five people in the studio working all together that was the box that we made for the entire packing this is how it was wrapped quickly and kept but the madness doesn't end here okay we were on our way for the delivery uh this was the box and we were still making it, we were still wrapping it in the car before just we handed over the project so this was uh design and build instead of just like rushing through the projects and you just seeing it which you could have also seen it in my uh on my website or on instagram i thought that it could be better if i spoke about a particular product that we designed and the entire process behind it how it went okay so now i am quickly going to ask uh, pooja that uh, should we stop here or do you want me to uh, just uh, run through uh, uh, some other project pooja i'm waiting for you Well, 
वेल ओके श्योर और डू वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट द क्वेश्चन आंसर राउंड But okay, I'll, I'll. Sorry. If you want to take up the questions, we will go ahead with the questions. Or if you want to quickly run through a project, it's also fine, sir. Okay, eh, great. So I will talk about uh, this another project that we did in uh, Mumbai, Varsova, and this was again featured in Architectural Digest. uh like what i said was this was done earlier to the project that i showed you before this at the start of this presentation <clears throat> uh this entire house was just a 2 bhk in a very old building but the beauty was that, that all the most of the walls were um, uh, partition walls so this is where i could shift my entrance which would enter into a small passage and then have rooms into like the living room and the kitchen and the bedroom uh we shut that we shifted the entire entry gave a double door and we created a foyer eating out some space from the kitchen now why did we do that because it's a house for a very young couple um just two people staying not a lot of cooking and they entertain a lot so their requirements were different right so we gave this double door now mind it this blue is the blue all right after like some 10 shades of blues that we made for the client she said that this is mera wala blue you know <laughs> so so we did that you enter into the foyer <clears throat> this is the living room all right <clears throat> uh if you see this house is very monochrome in terms of your flooring and your wall and the ceiling uh because we believed that the entire uh, the look and feel and the aesthetics could be bought by the furniture pieces or the fabrics or the colors on the furniture and so on right so if you see the walls and the floor are just pure we've gotten in colors with this carpet which is from hands the furniture which is from defern and charcoal project and a chikoti side table uh it was yeah, a 2 bhk yeah. So you're not I, presenting. You're not presenting. Sorry. Please share. Oh Jesus. No way. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. No problem. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Karan. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pooja, please keep talking to me. Please. Karan, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So guys, I'm really sorry. Uh, this is the um, sorry. Um, this is uh, this is the house that I've been talking about, and you guys heard what I was saying. So again, keeping what uh, uh, you know, my what uh, Zahadit said is that there has to be uh, a journey. There has to be that that experience when somebody enters into the house. So the moment you enter, which is very unlikely of a Bombay house, because people don't really have spaces they're very small apartments so you enter into a really nice big uh, foyer the reception area which also has a um, powder room next to it so this is where you enter and this is the living room now after all of that i said uh, you can see this that it is very muted the walls and the well, floors are to the screen why is that happening yaar i am sorry again uh You are sharing. It shows me that I'm sharing. Ah, uh, can you try to reshare? Like, stop sharing and then share again. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Pooja, do you also think that we are running out of time? Should I stop that and should we get on to question answer? Or should I still continue? Maybe you can show this the project that you're talking. We can see the images and then we can start with the question answer. Okay. Now, can you see it? Yes. Now we can. <clears throat> you have to tell me when it goes off again okay yes yes Jesus we'll Christ <clears throat> now can you see it yes you can see it yeah <laughs> all right can you see this now <clears throat> yes yes so we are okay okay great so um extremely muted uh, color palette and we've tried to get uh, the vibe with the furniture pieces and the carpet uh, it was a 2 bhk we converted one bedroom into a den and the other bedroom into a master bedroom 
uh, the den was mostly that you know if you see on your left uh take the next image oh this is the balcony just outside there you see the little telescope that's the balcony there you overlook the ocean it's at versova beach so that's a really cool thing most of them had taken the balcony inside the house but we tried to retain that because the clients really love to spend time out there and uh, now this is the den okay so if you see the sliding uh shutters uh out there they can they can shut and become like a bedroom and when they are entertaining guests it can just open up and be a part of the living room with a little day bed at the corner so it is just so if somebody wants to crash there if they're having a party the entire space is opened up okay uh <clears throat> that's a little uh, study kind of chair and this is how it looks so during the time so if you see the the curtain on the left is when is somebody is occupying the space and because it is of clear glass you shut it and you just roll the curtains out and it becomes like a bedroom okay uh, that's a cat <clears throat> so if you see this kitchen like i said that we had eaten up some space from the kitchen so we opened up the kitchen to the living room okay with a little island counter which also acted like a bar counter because they entertained a lot and below the counter we had a trolley which just fit in well that you just had to remove the trolley with all the bottles and everything uh this is the master bedroom now we converted this master bedroom like we were like that okay you know what let's do a carpeted floor uh the bed and the side tables uh they didn't want any tv so it was like music to my ears <clears throat> that is the wardrobe uh so we try to integrate all the requirements in a way that they become like an aesthetic uh, quotient so if you see this space uh uh, uh uh we needed they wanted wood in the bedroom okay so we converted a lowered wooden uh door into a wardrobe space uh there was a requirement of the mirror so we cladded the wall with the mirror and the same wooden lowered uh, detail goes onto the door for the bathroom so this, this is when you enter the bedroom a beautiful flash of light that comes in and this is the, the bathroom so if you also see that uh the tiles here on the wall are the same tiles which run throughout the house so there is not a lot of material palette that is there you only see that tile and the wood that is used and the carpet and that's about it minimal uh use of uh, different materials and this is what you get <clears throat> and that's the entry again okay so we've we're done with two projects uh and the little design and build of that particular product and now uh uh pooja we can start with your question answers yes sir uh thank you so much sir for sharing your projects and your overall design and construction experience <laughs> with us it was completely need a nice insightful and experience sharing session and it's definitely a pleasure to have you here and i hope the student participants will have a better understanding of how to translate the concepts into practice thank you so mm. much uh sure. now we will move on to the questions first question is uh, uh in the residence interior project which you showed in the beginning of the presentation the usage of gray shade neutral color in all the walls and ceilings of bedroom and living and living room and some furnitures makes the space monotonous how does this influence the psychology of people living in the house usually the gray color is used more in industrial projects or to emphasize other colors in residential projects okay so <clears throat> um uh vikram you know it's a mindset to be really honest uh also when you see when you break if you have a wall and a ceiling all right when you break the shade from the wall and it's a usual practice that the ceiling will be of a different color more certainly like a white or a something okay uh but what we try to do is we take the same color on the wall the ceiling and the wall again so it gives a sense of completeness and uh who said that the gray is an industrial color i it's it's a myth okay and i would suggest it is it is monotonous no it is a monochrome yes now how does gray help gray is the most neutral color that you can play with and anything against it 
it can house all right so if you pick up any other color say for example like a like a light yellow or a light green or a color they all are a color you know but when you see gray you don't see the gray you will put like an art on top of it you will put photographs on top of it the house has to evolve with the client okay so i as a designer and it's a very good question that you asked that you saw that the house was like the the walls were plain and all but it is for a reason we took the we took the photographs of the house just 6 months after it was handed over but if you see the house today the client has evolved with the house so there are a lot of lot more artifacts in the house there are a lot of arts on the wall there are a lot of um, you know masks and other things that can go on to the wall which comes with the client from her travel you know so giving a neutral palette to your client so that you know it doesn't look monotonous uh, for like say at least 10 next years because you are giving them a blank canvas uh to do whatever they would like you know so uh, it and it's is just a myth that gray is uh, an industrial color okay D- depends on what shade of gray you take and what is the quality of the paints that you take usually we would play with asian paints royal because it gives a very rich and chic uh, lustrous look uh, but try it out you know um this is what i have to say uh, we can go next If you still have any problems, you have my Instagram. You can always message me there, and I will keep answering. Okay, next. Okay, we we will go for one more question, sir. Most of the questions are related to the color palette, but uh, one thing uh, was different. Uh, while going on going through your projects, we came around a lot of things made up of concrete and kept raw. What is that about concrete that interests you the most? You know, I'm just trying to read. Uh, where is this? Um, Uh, it's, the it's the beginning. Can I read it once again? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, while going through your projects, we came around lot of things made up of concrete and kept raw. What is that about concrete that interests you most? Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I just also read this one question uh, where somebody corrected uh, my the word Arabic. I am very sorry. I just took it up from the internet, which said that this is how the Arabic word for shukran is, and I just copy pasted it. But sorry, I'll correct that. Um, so uh, the second thing is that what you talk about concrete is that you know I am an architect. Okay, uh, we ventured out into furniture, uh, into interiors. We do a lot of furniture, but uh, you know the I would say the kira in me doesn't stop. There is something that my mind always wants to venture out into. You know. So when I was when usually we hand over the projects and the clients would want to uh, you know exercise their space or their small little things that they want to do and they'll be always out of options because there were only like two three big shops that you could go to and every other house in Bombay would have those accessories all right so that got me thinking that what apart from your ceramic or um, you know the other project products that you get into the market can I get onto the board. which will allow people to experiment with the materials you know so thinking about different 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 materials i said that you know dude i am an architect okay and concrete is my bay you know i should be using concrete and not a lot of people explore concrete so that's how we got into the um uh, uh, making designing products out of concrete that is your home and table accessories <clears throat> office table accessories and um <clears throat> you know what we could achieve with concrete was not what you achieve otherwise also you know somewhere uh, if you go to a village where you only see bullock carts and horses and you have a really swanky car coming in that's going to be the talk of the town so you see uh, ceramic everywhere porcelain everywhere you will see um uh, uh precast uh, fibers uh, material and everything around but the moment you have something unusual like concrete stepping into the market and a cool product like something like infinity that we made you know it would grab an attention also it's um it would grab that sort of interest into concrete so that was just the concept behind getting concrete into the into all our products that we make thank you thank you 
Okay, okay. Uh, we have many more questions from the students and but then uh, we are running out of time. So we will keep you posted uh, through uh, right. probably. So, All right. Yeah, okay. We are uh, at the end of this session. Uh, now, I, once again, thank you, sir, for accepting our invite and for spending your valuable time with us today. It was definitely an uh, interesting session to work. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, we would end this with the word of thanks rendered by Professor Ashtok Kumar, HOD SRMC. So, over to you. Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning, one and all. Uh, of course, uh, Karan, architect uh, KD, uh, it's really wonderful to have you today's session. Uh, see, uh, in your uh, session, you were talking about the designing and the uh, design and build. Uh, actually, design uh, uh, from the creator's point of view, the designer, the architect who designed the, designed the thing, he has only satisfaction, 50% half of the satisfaction will get it while designing. The remaining half of the uh, uh, satisfaction, the ecstasy will be in uh, once it has been made out of uh, yeah. that yeah. is the actual. Uh, yeah. uh, that's what you you shown the hands-on work uh, experience with with the, the thought of uh, immediate thought of infinity to the love and affection to gift uh, to your uh, the friend or client. So actually, that's been made. No, once the design may be, we, we would have been visualizing the design. Uh, but of course, the uh, it, it's bringing it into the reality. What are the texture and the color and the material that that, that really bringing it? And uh, of course, you walk the hands on yourself itself. That's <laughs> really <laughs> <important>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful part of the thing. Uh, it's uh, of course the every design reality. That's what uh, we uh, all the participants, all the students would have been learned from this session. Uh, of course, uh, also you are talking about the color palette. Uh, um, right. I remember uh, Asian Paint came with the color uh, colors magazine with a uh, different uh, different people's uh, version of uh, color palette. Every architect or designer or interior designer with a different color codes and how they are fond of which color code they are using it maximum in their designs. Maybe this differs from person to person and yes, the yes. client client to between clients to architect as a and designer. Yes. Also with the designs, what mood you want to create for that? Really, you created a good mood for your clients. Of course, thank you for that. You have shown your designs very well. It's a great pleasure to have you today. Thank you very much, uh, Kedi. Uh, it's uh, really wonderful to have you. And on behalf of SRM Seed, uh, Ramaburam, uh, we really uh, uh, we thank you once again. Uh, on behalf of our faculty, students, uh, I thank our management for giving us the opportunity and the support, encouragement uh, to conduct this hashtag uh, 2020 virtual uh, symposium, con continuous marathon of uh, webinars. Uh, thank you to our management and all the participants uh, who are all encouraging us participating this event uh, online. Uh, it's uh, grateful to have them and also sharing their uh, views and uh, questioning our web in the webinar and also uh, it's a uh, continuous participation really overwhelming and uh, we thank you one and all also our uh, no we have to thank our uh, faculties coordinators moderators and our students who are all supporting uh, directly indirectly uh, designing all the thing is uh, by our students and faculties it's a wonderful uh, to have them and uh, no thank our all of them who are all involved uh, for this hashtag 2020. Once again, uh, I thank you, uh, architect uh, Karan Desai, uh, KD. Uh, it's a really wonderful session uh, for thank you. Sir. Uh, really. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you, Thanks for the. Thanks for the. I, I once again thank architect Karan Desai, sir, for such an interesting session, sir. And uh, I uh, thank all the participants of Hashtag 2020 Footprints of Architects series. Sir. Please do join us now for the next webinar on Space and Place by architect Girish Doshi. Thank you all. Have a great day.